Okay, two seven zero still. Two seven zero. Yep. Argus is that way. Yeah. It is. So stalked crinoids here, the red ones. We have some anthemastis mushroom corals just on the rock. Soft octocoral. I can't get over that color. That is amazing. Very vibrant. It's a question for those of you with lots of experience on expeditions. Have any of you seen a creature that no one has even been able to recognize or guess what it is? With the geology group? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Every day. How was that sponge you were looking at last night? Yeah, we were, we were <laughs> baffled by a sponge. And then uh, a uh, biologist came in and said, oh, yeah, that's that one. <laughs> But I'll be darned if they know the potassium content of these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, one time, actually, I was, I was on a cruise with Steve. And we had seen, I had remembered seeing a s single polyp soft octocoral that was really large. Kind of looked like a hand in the mm -hmm. Galapagos. And then we saw it again in the remote Pacific. And Steve said that that was a new species Whoa. that has Ooh. now been, I think, described. I think the paper is either coming out or is out at this point. But at the time, it I mean, it looks quite like an anemone, but only has the eight tentacles. Yeah, Steve chimed in that every day they see stuff that he can't... Uh, necessarily identify because they rely on the work of specialists to get a s species on, on many of these and it's difficult to ID most things using cameras unless you have lots of collections and imagery already. Jess, are you thinking we don't need to pitch that weight? Okay. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um. Uh, anyone's guess? That's the current heading of the ship, but I don't, I don't know what will be. Uh. It, there's very little forces at the surface, so um, they've kind of been spinning around all. Yeah. So hey, Jake, are you able to do a little quick uh, uh, current check? Sure. I'll just go hands off. Seems like... Definitely have a little extra time, because we want to hit closer to noon rather than earlier, and we're at 1750, not 1800. So we have like an extra five minutes. I'm left. drifting south, I think. So north to south. Oh, look at oh there's a rhino. crinoid. Thanks to our viewers for tuning in. We have people from 17 different countries watching right now. Send us your questions. Steve noted we are seeing a big Candidella gigantea, an unbranched primnoid. 
<laughs> nice. Uh -huh. Oh, look at how that one's kind of growing out and up. Yeah. A lot up here. Oh, here's a nice story from Osako. When she visited the Smithsonian, she found uh, Okeanos materials on the shelf, and when she took the first one look, uh, to look at, she was astonished because the specimen label uh, mentioned that it was ID'd by her. Oh, huh. that's awesome. Uh, I saw when I was visited Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology, I saw my handwriting on one of the specimens, but it was not ID cool. by me. It was just <laughs> it was just like the number. Someone else's ID. Wow. What are, yeah, what are those densities in that? Yeah. Wow. Zoom on that. Uh, hey, we have a question from Six Hour Anatomy, my high I'm school there, in Can we talk about, can someone talk about the spirals in the coral? The function of that, the morphology? Steve can. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, I think Adam can speculate. Yeah, uh, if you want a wild uh, theory. <laughs> yeah, I heard like speculation that it matches the current. These almost look like little tiny branches that are kind of clumped with mm. a lot of polyps. I was suggested I that, that they are anemones underneath and that the coral reacts to them by mm. growing a little. Oh, okay. Interesting. The branches are super curly right there. Hard to say. Okay, yeah, there's one up there. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Steve just wrote exactly what I just said, except for that the growth over them is possibly to smother the anemone. Huh. Kill it. Wow. I don't know. This is a deep sea strangulation technique. We're going to have to go. Yeah. yeah. Got to go. Q level to mine. Maybe next. Go uh, west. Yeah, I'd say. I think we'll be all right. Any last surprises back row of tasks? Uh, probably, but I'm not going to let you know about them yeah. until the very till, last Until we're about to leave uh -huh. and then it adds 15 minutes to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every time. Looks like a Victor Gorgia. Yeah. And a Metallogorgia and one of those yellow plexorids. Quick zoom on the purple guy. It's a nice wow, color. Wow, yeah, it's beautiful. Man, when there's a second purple coral, though, I'll be completely screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Victor Gorgia. Oh, that's right. All right, come on. Keep moving, I think. Back into uh, looks like columnar mm -hmm. wall. Am I getting pretty close to the side of that local peak? Here? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we were seeing there. Is it's all this columnar <laughs> big shrimp? Well, shrimp bay is big. It's kind of one of one of the columns. Some of the columns go up a bit higher. That's all.
Do you remember what the height was? The uh, I don't awesome. think we noted it. Yeah. We didn't quite actually get to the peak. Yeah, so it'd be good to... That's the last task. Okay. Note what the height is when we get off the bottom. Yeah, we'll no note that with Argus then. I think I've got the location of it pretty well down, but we'll just see whatever Argus's depth is when it stops getting returns. Um, but yeah, we should probably start to set up here. Yeah. Just keep... Uh, Coming up. Yeah, you can just keep coming up. I'm keep it in view. All right. Is there a recovery heading there any that you wanna wanna stay in for? Two hundred? Yeah. I think we can probably just keep this in view until we're just keep driving out to the end of it and then kinda come around. It's it's hard to say. I don't know what we might be in the recovery orientation now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a viewer asking if any fossils have been found on any of the expeditions. Oh, yeah. We collected a fossilized, uh, that we consider that sponge piece fossilized? We collected? To be determined. Uh, but yeah, it meets some of the criteria of a fossil. And they found part of the skull of a beaked whale that was fossilized on the last expedition. So this looks like the looks like the one the one mm -hmm. yeah the peak keep going up we had a question about when the next dive will be Watch, watch our web page for an update. Unless has anyone gotten a time yet? Uh, yeah, it's not too far to the next dive site. Uh, we definitely want to take care of the camera on uh, Argus. So, stand by. The board says, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the SPL, actually. <laughs> Am I allowed to? <laughs> You yeah. must be able to tell us in our ears. <laughs> Argus depth seventeen ten, and we're still seeing return. Yeah. It is hard to say though because we have that more general high over there, but I think that this this little local peak is the tip. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Nice. Okay. Here's a marine biologist question. Who wants it? <laughs> We'll oh, I got it. it. I got it. Why do some crinoids have stems and others don't? <laughs> to get to the other side. There you go. <laughs> we'll say it's about nice 1710 try. there. Yeah, I like it. 1710? For the peak, okay. yeah. Yeah, I think different strategies, right? One, Some of them want to get up into the yeah. flow to filter feed, so they have a stalk, and some of them are moving around to, to the flow, so they're... They're mobile. Two ways to crack the egg of how to get food. I don't think crack the egg was used correctly there. I'm not sure. I think I just made up that uh, little colloquialism. They want food. Okay, we're just getting set up for recovery here. Gonna log off bottom. Oh man, where's my sheet of things I'm supposed to be doing? Oh yeah. Yep.
Greetings from Megan. Which Megan? Megan Cook. Hey, Megan. Hey, Megan. <laughs> We're having a great time. Did you see what we saw last night, though, Megan? <laughs> oh, yeah. We saw our first Dumbo octopus. It was amazing. All right, getting stretched out. I'm going to switch over to USBL. There we go. And clear all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> we have a viewer right. asking about patterns of life we see on the seamounts. That's actually one of the questions we're What's we are our vertical to velocity? So stay tuned to find out more about patterns of life on the seamounts. Can I see your utilities page? Gotta do, gotta do better than that. See if we can do better than that. <laughs> so we have begun our ascent. We have a question about video highlights. And one of the things that is part of my job is to note some of the really neat things we see and then someone else on the team creates those video highlights. But watch for our Dumbo octopus video. Surely that one will make the cut. We had a question about from a viewer about um, future plans for expeditions. This uh, Next season begins in February, and it's going to be starting in the same area, exploring in the Hawaiian Islands area, probably for the next few years. We have a viewer asking about any special rules for collecting fossils. And we definitely had some special rules when we were working in the Papahanaumokuakea National Marine Reserve. And uh, we had special permits to work in that area, but we were not collecting within the boundaries this time. We have another question about uh, fellowship opportunities and when applications will open. I don't know the exact answer to that question, but keep checking the website and check our social media page. We were all delayed because of COVID. None of the SCFs were able to travel during 2020. And we have some who were not able to travel this year. So we'll, they will be traveling probably on the next expedition.
One of our viewers asked if there's pizza on board, and yes, they take great care of us. We have lots of food options, and there's definitely pizza. We had pizza yesterday. Yeah. It's really good. It looked great. We always have a buffet at meals, so you can kind of pick what looks great to you. Ah, I have an update from Megan Cook. She says, uh, keep checking the websites and social media, and there will be opening applications for the 2023 season uh, programs in the summer of 2022. So check it out. If you are a teacher or if you have a student who's interested in ocean exploration, also check out our website to find out about opportunities for ship-to-shore interactions. We're f we finish up our last ones for this season today, and you can start book we'll start booking ahead for the next expedition. Awesome opportunity to bring exploration into your own classroom. Or to a group, doesn't have to be a classroom. Now. Yeah, go ahead. That was actually the one expedition of that season that I was not on. So I can't really speak to it. Um, I would recommend if they haven't watched already, there's the uh, documentary on National Geographic. Um, yeah. Um, We had a question about uh, Expedition Amelia, and uh, our navigator was not involved with that project, but check out the documentary. If you haven't seen it, it's great. I think it's on Disney Plus. 
I think. Hmm? Disney Plus? Uh, uh, I yeah, I think it is on Disney Plus. Uh -huh. Dave, can you answer a question? Certainly. How many cameras are there underwater? Oh my goodness. Uh, there's there's two main cameras on Argus and Herc, one uh, that are HD. Uh, the HD camera on Argus is down right now. And then there's four, six different cameras, on, some of them that I don't look at too much. Uh, six different cameras on Herc. Uh, for various aspects, uh, looking at sampling boxes, uh, forward, aft, that kind of stuff. Uh, and another four cameras on Argus in addition to the HD. Great, thank you. We had a question about how many expeditions we carry out per year. And you can see the history of all of the expeditions on the webpage, www.nautiluslive.org. So I'm looking at 2021 right now, and it has 10 listed for this year. Each one of those being multiple days with multiple dives. Is that pretty average, you think, for a year? Uh, that is. We're 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 heading into a period of time where we're going to do more uh, rather than maybe a six-month uh, season, six to seven-month season. We're going to be aiming more towards a 10-month season. Uh, when we're done here uh, next week, then uh, we'll be off for... Uh, about a month before we start preparatory uh, work uh, uh, before, uh, in Honolulu uh, before our uh, shakedown cruise, which will be in early February. And then we start uh, expeditions uh, in mid-February. Uh, and so we'll have uh, about a month and a half off and then go back at it again until October, more or less. So aiming for about a nine to 10 month season. We had fewer in 2020, I'm guessing probably COVID. That's correct. Some of that. That's correct. We got a late start. Uh, we didn't. St we usually start in uh, uh, late April uh, to early May and uh, go until, say, October. Uh, in 2020, because of COVID, we didn't get started until mid-June uh, and uh, finished up uh, about, the, about normal. But uh, we also had uh, a minimum crew on board. We had... Like you said, there were no SCFs, uh, science communication fellows uh, like Lisa, um, and and so we you know we're, we were somewhat limited in what we could do, but we did did the most we could. Well, we're glad to be back. Indeed. Another question: Does the same crew go on multiple expeditions a year? Uh, it depends on the department. Uh, there are. Uh, Yes, uh, and, and we have a rotating uh, core of, of crew that come out uh, and generally try and limit that to uh, maybe a couple of months at a time max and then rotate back to shore and somebody else comes on board uh, and uh, to take that place uh, and, then, uh, and then repeat that process. What was our estimated ascent time? Anybody know the? I think it was a two hours for ascent. About two hours for ascent. Yeah, we're supposed to be back up on deck around uh, noon. It's uh, ten thirty. Hour and a half. Um, and I think we're ascending. Let's see. I can get an ascent rate. I think. 
Uh, I'm gonna switch monitors. Uh, we are ascending at 12-ish meters a minute. Just slower than I don't like all. Great, thank you. I'm gonna sign off for a bit and go teach a class. Ship to shore interaction. See ya. Bye.
There's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Come closer. I didn't see any sharks on the side of the ship today. Nothing today yet? Not yet. Dang. Maybe they're making room for the whales. Yeah. Hopefully. We only have, what day is today? Friday? So. 17th. That's all I know. <laughs> it's Friday. Yep. Yeah, we only have like three more days for whales. Yeah. Dang. <sighs> Hopefully they can hear us. Humpbacks. Humpbacks. <laughs> three days left. I know you're here. <laughs> I wonder how many humpback whales uh, migrate here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that number. Like, if we're one small speck in the ocean, how many whales <laughs> right. are even around us? Like, is it so slim that the chance is just minimal or is it I don't I always assumed it was like that because of the size of the ocean but I don't know I don't know maybe it's like spiders at any given moment you're only 10 feet away <laughs> that's a creepy analogy super disturbing yep. although I feel like that distance goes gets quite large when we're out here which is comfortable that's true get at least a couple miles between me and the next spider <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't be any on the My boat. My favorite so. part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Someone just commented, we did see an octopus on this dive, so things are looking better. <laughs> that is true. true. We have been, there's been a, a lot of us have been here for close to five weeks now. And yeah. that was the first octopus. So. First one. First one for me ever. Ever? Ever. Wow. It's a lot of cool, like, floaty bits in our first watch for this dive. Yeah. Well, those, like, Tina 4s that light up. Well, I guess they don't light up. They reflect, from what I understand. Really pretty lights. Hmm. One viewer is commenting on them. Maybe whales don't like the noise of the ship in the ROVs, and that certainly can be. Uh, the ROV is quite noisy with all of the thrusters uh, to help it move through the water column. We have seen one whale um, close enough to Hercules to really... We saw one in the distance uh, the other day, which was cool. Uh, and then we saw one a few years ago when we were in uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But... We don't see too, too many large swimming creatures in front of the ROV. And again, it could be because of the noise, but it could just be also that we're one small speck in the ocean. They also commented that whale spiders sounds terrifying. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> yes. Imagine a spider the side of, of a whale. I already don't like nope. sea spiders to begin nope. with. Nope. I think they're creepy. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs>
Oh, I got the answer for how many whales. Oh, good. Okay, so according to Google, which, you know, could be right or wrong, but NOAA says that it's an estimate that there are 12,000 humpback whales migrate from Alaska down to the warm waters of Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yeah, so 12,000 doesn't seem like that much. That doesn't seem very see. much for what, <laughs> the amount of ocean we've covered. Dang. Yeah, that number seems small. Too small. Still hope, though. For anyone just tuning in, uh, we are bringing the ROVs up after a about 24 hour long dive, uh, fourth dive of this expedition, and uh, hopefully we'll get one more in before having to head back to port. Uh, we have about, today's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. we have about three more days, including today, uh, for this expedition. We will be back in port on Monday. And that actually wraps up our 2021 season. So uh, we're fastly approaching the end of this year. We've gone a lot longer than we usually do. We started later in the year, but uh, are also going a lot later in the year. So most of our team will be departing uh, between Monday and Wednesday, heading back home. But our 2022 season actually starts in February. So uh, if we don't have a <laughs> we don't have a long break. Uh, you get to come back, join us online in uh, just a couple of months. So uh, we're excited to bring more exploration to you uh, live, starting mid February. We have uh, a pretty exciting season. We have jumping right right into it with uh, three ROV expeditions. That will last about February through maybe mid-May. So we'll have lots of lots of exploring, lots of new adventures that you can be a part of. We'll be making our uh, 2022 season public uh, sometime in January. So. Um, Definitely stay tuned to see where we're going, what we're doing, and how you can stay involved. The most, the best way to stay involved, if you want all of the news as fast as possible, is to sign up for our newsletter. You can click on that on our website, on the home page, and from there you can 
easily get emails from us on any expedition updates or program updates uh, or any any news that we come out with.
We have a few comments and questions coming in about uh, what comes after today. So uh, the team will figure out a plan. Uh, and we haven't, ha we don't have a time yet for any uh, next dives. So uh, definitely stay tuned, keep checking our website. We'll keep the status posted and updated with uh, plans for the rest of this expedition. But I will admit, I also have not checked. We have a big board that we are always writing the plans for the day, and I have not looked at it in a while, so. Last I heard, it was four to six hours for the next storm. Cool. Is so, it, yeah. Is it Seamount B? What did you know? That I haven't seen yet. Yeah, I haven't. I don't have a dive report out yet. Great. So for anyone who wants to know as well as <laughs> as well as me, then uh, keep keep checking our website. Uh, we'll update the status. Yep. Wait, is the front row getting music? You guys are getting music up there? Blue. Do I have, oh, I have a blue. <gasps> oh my God, it's Christmas music. <laughs> the best morning. <laughs> I needed this, Dave. <laughs> Making Kelly's day over here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Doesn't feel like Christmas. I will say that is very hard being out here the last few weeks is it you do kind of forget that it's literally Christmas or any holiday. It, whatever you celebrate, but yeah. that is happening right now. Like yeah. it's, uh, you do like forget. Winter. I've been uh, coordinating Christmas dinner remotely, like looking oh. at the grocery ads and saying, okay, go get some of this. And nice job. Yeah, but I'm the cook, so. I'm enjoying my mom planning all that for me. <laughs> <laughs> whole family counts on me doing it and ah. it's hard to do it by remote control so I've been, yeah. del I've been delegating like <laughs> what's your like go-to Christmas uh, dinner Christmas Eve uh, we is when we all get together and we do presents and that kind of stuff and we usually do surf and turf oh, uh, okay. we usually do steaks uh, crab shrimp Wow that kind of stuff um, this year my oldest son said that he's gonna get a prime rib and uh, cook it and bring it over um, Tenth and M Seafoods in Anchorage. Uh, we have uh, Dungeness Crab reserved uh, to go pick up, and uh, then we'll pick up some other things uh, when I get there. 
Sounds great. And on uh, Christmas Day, we're going to cook uh, ham. Wow. Just because it's pretty casual. Drop in, whoever comes by, that kind of stuff. So. I do love a good holiday ham. Yep, me too. My family always does prime rib. This is the first year I'm doing the holidays at my oh, house. Oh, wow. Just with my immediate family, parents, and siblings. But How many does that make, though? Um, if my brother brings his girlfriend to now with with my fiancé, then it's, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right. Better to start off with a smaller So not, not too big, yeah. I'm not ready to host everyone yet. What <laughs> Just the immediate it? family. <laughs> Do you cook or does your fiance cook? I'll have to. I will. Okay. What are you making? I don't know yet. Peanut, peanut butter. And <laughs> I haven't jelly. even thought about it because <laughs> I've been here in Hawaii. <laughs> I do need to start thinking.